الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين I ask Allah to make us of those who he frees from the hellfire every night in this blessed month of Ramadan guaranteed a place in Jannah without any confliction in his promise we take over from where we left off last time where Allah Jalla wa Allah was talking about the changing of the Qibla and this was a contentious issue for the people of the book and the mushrikeen and Allah Jalla wa Allah says that Ibrahim was true to his word and he made the house in Kaaba a place for mankind and in it he placed the Maqam Ibrahim and he made it a musalla. And Ibrahim rose the foundations of the house with his son Ismail, and they were making dua, oh Allah, send from them a messenger who will explain to them the rulings of the kitab, and the hikmah, and the sunnah, and he purifies them. And then Allah Jalla wa ala, within the space of one, two pages, mentions the word foolishness twice. Allah says, number one, وَمَنْ يَرْقَبْ أَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِيهَا نَفْسَهِ A person who turns away from the religion of monotheism of Ibrahim السلام, except that he is fooling himself or he is making himself in the level of ignorance. Because Allah has chosen him and he is from the Salihin. And then Allah Jalla wa Allah goes on to mention the Anbiya that came from his progeny and he commands us, the believers, to say that we believe in all of them and to believe in everything that was revealed to them Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, Asbat, Ma'ud, Musa, wa Isa until the end of the ayat and what this tells us is that we are a balanced nation and that's what happens in the next Juz وَكَذَلِكَ جَأَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى we are a balanced nation because we are firm upon Tawheed. We are far away from Shirk. We believe in all of the Prophets without creating this level of cultism and partisan with them. We hear the ayat of Allah and we submit to them. And this is unlike those people who are foolish. And this is an example of how we have been given the Qibla. We hear and we obey. We don't hold Allah or His Messenger or His Book <coughs> to content. And this is how they became foolish. And this is how they knew. And Allah says in the Quran, Al-Ladina Atina Al Kitab, Ya'rifunahu kama Ya'rifuna Abnahum. They knew that He is the Prophet and they knew that the Qibla will be changed and He will come from Mecca. And this is the truth. And Allah has fulfilled the truth that He has said in the previous books. So we know from all of this that the Qibla being changed to Mecca has a lot of hikmah. Number one is the way that Allah has decreed. Number two is the way of all the Prophets because most of the Prophets here are mentioned. Number three is the place of Maqam Ibrahim. Number four is the place of Tawaf. As Allah says in the end of the first Jews that Ibrahim and Ismail erected the house for the purpose of it being a place of worship and tahira bayti lit-ta'ifin to make tawaf wal-aqifin to stay there and worship wa ruqat sujood and it's also a place where all the anbiya went to to make the hajj and it's a place which signifies the tawheed of Allah jalla wa ala so there's a great deal of hikmah in it then Allah goes on to mention Safa wal Marwa in the Safa wal Marwa to mean Sha'airillah. And this is connected to the changing of the Qibla. That this is a sign from Allah. So this is the correct Qibla. So follow it. But within this context, Allah Jalla wa Allah is also telling us that you will be tested. You have the Haq, you have the Messenger, you follow him, but you will be tested. But if you remember him, he will remember you. And Allah is telling us to be patient upon prayers. Because Allah is with those who establish the prayer. 
but he will test us. Then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to mention the reason for the deviation and the distortion of the people before us. And the reason is because they made taqlid, they blindly followed their leaders. So why Allah says, they take rivals alongside Allah. They love those rivals, their priests, and those people who legislate for them and distort his message as much as they love Allah. And Allah says that when they return back to Allah, and again, Surah Baqarah is about the resurrection, when they return back to Allah, they will find that their love will have eradicated وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ asbab all forms of connection and blindly following and love for one another will be gone. We followed them in the distorted message that only if on this day there is something that we can do to be free from them and the crimes that they've done, just as they are free from us on this day. They were fair... They were pleased with their actions. They were pleased with the distorted message. But on that day, it will be scattered. It will be scattered. That's what Allah says. وَإِذْ أَقِيلُ لَهُمْ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزِلُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُوا مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا If you tell them to follow what Allah has revealed from this book, from this messenger, and to change the Qibla more directly, they will say, no, 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 we will follow what our fathers were upon. Allah mentions this as a doubt of this. And this is how they have made it fair seeming for them to follow the religion that they're upon. But Allah refused this doubt also. They were not guided in the first place. They were not intelligent in the first place. So why are you following them? It's an irrational argument. And Allah goes on to describe them as being deaf, dumb and blind and having no intellect. And this comes the second time mentioned in Surah Baqarah. The first time in the Baqarah it was mentioned with those people who pretend to have Iman. They show Iman but they don't have Iman. And the same thing has been mentioned here with those people who have distorted the message. Then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to mention that piety, laysal birra, it is not to face one particular Qibla. You cannot say a person is misguided because he is facing the East or the West. Piety is to believe in what Allah has legislated. What Allah has legislated to believe in the last day, to believe in the angels and the books and all the prophets that came with them and to perform these good deeds that Allah mentions here. To be good to your family members, to be good to orphans, to look after the poor and the needy, and to help people and establish the prayer and to give the zakat, and to uphold the covenant that you have with Allah and to remain patient. This is what piety is. Then Allah Jalla wa ala moves on to talk about now ahkam. And Imam Suyuti said that this chapter of the Quran, the second juz, is predominantly talking about ahkam. And this is connected to rulings, and this is connected to إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطِ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Guide us to the right path of those people who were guided and who upheld the Sharia of Allah. So now Allah is saying, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He's talking to us, not Bani Israel anymore. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَكِسَاسُ فِي الْقَتْلَ A penal code has been legislated for you. Why? To preserve your life. وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِسَاسِ حَيَّاتٌ يَا أُلَّ الْبَابِ to preserve life. People before us, they didn't preserve life. They killed one another for the sake of the dunya. Then Allah Jalla wa ala moves on to another thing which is prescribed for us. If somebody leaves any kind of wealth behind, then to leave a, a bequest. Again, this is to preserve wealth. And we have seen the first Jews, how many times people have been killed in the name of religion because they distorted the message. Number two, how many times was their wealth taken away from them in the name of the religion and distortion within it? And then Allah Jalla wa ala talks about Ya ladina amanu kutiba alaykumus Then Allah says, Fast, 
in Ramadan. And he's obligated upon you like he was obligated on those before you. This clearly shows that fasting comes within the context of preserving life, preserving wealth, preserving desires. And then Allah goes on to mention some of the ahkam connected to the fasting. And then, after the ayat of fasting, Allah then moves on to talking about judgment and warfare. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالُكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ Allah is telling us here not to accept the wealth of other people. Number one, the first one was to take people's wealth unjustly. This one is now to go into the courts and to claim something which is not yours and to try and get away with it. So now as we can see here, Siyam has been put right in the middle of this. And then Allah Jalla wa Allah then talks about the Mawaqeet, the lunar calendar, and how it is connected to the Hajj, to the Qibla, the correct Qibla. But then Allah do, then talks about وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا is very important here because Bani Israel, those maghrub alayhim and those who are dhalleen until now are oppressing one another and killing and they're claiming they're doing it for the sake of the truth. Allah is saying here, if you are to engage in warfare, then don't do it out of extremism. Don't do it out of transgressing the bounds of the laws of warfare. In Allah la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Allah doesn't like those people who transgress. But this is clear that that fighting has been prescribed for a particular reason. And not to take people's wealth and not to do not to transgress the rights of other people. Then Allah Jalla wa'ala moves on to talking about the Shahr al-Haram wal hurumat al-Qisas and he's talking about all of the things that we mentioned here and then he goes on to talk about the rulings of Hajj again connected to the correct Qibla and then Allah Jalla wa'ala moves on to the next page Some people when you see them they might be they might please you in their words they might please you in their words, but what they actually are doing is spreading corruption. Again, this is the idea of nifaq, and it's the idea of those people who have distorted the message for the sake of the dunya. So if you say to him, If you say to him, Fear Allah, He takes his pride and his honor in disobeying Allah, in corrupting the land, in corrupting lineage, in corrupting the economy. And this is some of the sifat that have been mentioned for those people, Magdub alayhim. But then Allah ends this and He tells us, Ya ayyuhaladheena, who say la ilaha illallah, enter into Islam wholeheartedly and don't follow the ways of shaitan. Because there's going to be a day when your Lord will come to you and the clouds of the angels will come and they will judge every single matter. Judge every single matter. Again, affirming the resurrection. Allah is telling us, ask Bani Israel, ask those people who have been described in Surah Fatiha before, how many ayat have they been given but they still didn't make shukr of these ayat and they changed the ayat of Allah. They changed the ayat of Allah. Why? Because Allah says in the next ayah, kafru dunya. The life of this dunya has been made fair seeming to them. They want to seek it. But those people who fear the hereafter, again affirming resurrection, Allah will give them rizq without any limitation. <coughs> so how many chances have they been given and how many opportunities they've been given they still belied and they still went against not believing in the resurrection correctly. Then Allah Jalla wa ala goes on to mention many different ahkam connected to those people coming to the Prophet وسلم, asking him, And some of the ulama have mentioned here that the here there is a fa'idah going back and asking questions to the people of knowledge. 
when you ask the people of knowledge and ask them the questions, then they are the ones who are able to give you the correct ruling. And it also teaches us also that when we ask questions, a lot of khair can come out of it. A lot of khair and discussion and detail and ignorance can be removed because of it. So here we have asking about how to spend our wealth, how to spend the sacred months, what is the ruling on alcohol, what is the ruling on gambling, what is the ruling on menses, female menses, what are some of the rulings connected to talaq, what are some of the rulings connected to guardianship, breastfeeding and maintenance. These are the hakam that I mentioned here and some of them. But there's something that we need to make note of here is that some of these things that have been mentioned are not mentioned out of coincidence. They have been mentioned here because in the previous chapter the fitna and the distortion occurred in some of these issues. When it comes to wealth, when it comes to following of desires, when it comes to splitting between man and wife and we sworn Harut and Marut and here now we have the Ahkam of Talaq. And we saw the man being killed because of the cow and now here we are being asked on how to spend our wealth. So Allah Jalla wa Allah is explaining in great detail here the ahkam connected to these things. Also we see within this context of questioning and ayat, we are told that talaq is a very serious issue because Islam has come to remove the splitting of families, to remove the splitting between man and wife like the Maghdubi alayhim have created and Allah is saying here not to take talaq as an as a easy matter. Not to take it as something which is huzwa, something which is played with, something which is easy. And Allah has told us to do it within the context of talaq, وَذْكُرُ نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكُمْ Count the blessings that you have. Allah is telling us to have a positive idea of marriage and family relationships. And Allah tells us, يَعِذُهُمْ bi. And Allah is teaching us that when we have kind of whatever issues we have domestically in our house, Allah is telling us to refer this back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And He is uh, exhorting us in this, He is encouraging us in this excessively. And this clearly shows that Islam has come with a framework to, prov- to preserve family life, to preserve society. And all of these ayat and ahkam are talking about things which are positive for human life. Not things that will degrade human life like what happened to the people before us. Then Allah Jalla wa Allah mentions a story of those people who left their houses in, uh, in an army and Allah caused them to die. Allah caused them to die. Alam tara illadina kharaju min diyarihim wa hum ulufun hadharan mawt faqal lahum Allah mutu. Allah said die and they died an army, living men, Allah told them to die, and then Allah resurrected them. ثُمَّ أَحْيَاهُمْ So now this is now the third incident of resurrection mentioned in Surah Baqarah. And we've mentioned before that Surah Baqarah is called Surah Baqarah because of these incidents of resurrection and affirming the foundation of Iman in being resurrected to Allah and that we will be questioned for our deeds and whether we will be of those who are maghdub alayhim, or those who are dhalin, or those who people have the favor of Allah and steadfastness upon the straight path. And the story continues of Talut who has been given kingship. But the people from Bani Israel were not happy with him. They said he is from a low lineage and we have more right to it, we are more rich than him. And they were affected by the politics that was there. And Allah is mentioning here and he refutes these doubts and he says that Allah guides who he wants. There could be a small army and if Allah gives them tawfiq, Allah can make them succeed over their army uh, to their enemies as he pleases. And this is how Allah preserves or prefers, Allah prefers some messengers over others. Tilka rusul faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. Some of them Allah spoke to, some of them Allah raised in Station, and then he goes on to mention Isa alayhi salam and how he supported Isa alayhi salam. And then Allah Jalla wa reinforces the idea of resurrection. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, anfiqu mimma razukunnaakum min qabl. 
and yet here yom la bayum fihi wa la khullatun ashfa'a that this is a day of resurrection when you will not have any help except for your good deeds this is now into the third juz and inshallah we will carry this on bismillah tomorrow ask allah to make us of those who understand the Qur'an and re- recite it just like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do in his night gatherings with Jibreel Alayhi Salam Hadha Wallahu A'lam Wa Sallallahu Ma'ala Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in